Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, this is a rather interesting radio, and in fact, it's been around quite some time, but it appears it's making its revival as I've seen this being sold on quite a few different websites recently. Now, essentially, this is actually a mobile radio, but in a funky camo man pack with an internal rechargeable battery. Now, we will go over the specs in a moment and go through the menus, but from the research I've done, this model number VV898SP has a couple of variations. The VV898 is just the radio and as a mobile vehicle radio with an output power of 10 watts. The VV89S is 25 watts and the VV898SP is the same radio, but in this portable man pack. I've also seen this same man pack in different colors but I'm really digging this camo version. Now the included accessories include a multi-function microphone, which makes it easy to control the radio without actually touching it. A user's manual, which is actually pretty good, covers most of the features and functions. You also get a mains power adapter, which can provide 13.8 volts DC at five amps, meaning you can use this power supply to either run the radio as a base station or use the same power supply to recharge the internal battery. A dual band 100 watt rated antenna is included, which screws onto the top of the mounted SO239 socket. You also get a vehicle power cable, although strangely, they provided this power cable with a connector which cannot be used with the man pack itself. In fact, it's to be used with the radio itself if you were to remove the radio from the man pack. Now I'll show you inside the radio later on in the video and you'll see what I mean. Now this upgraded version also includes a USB programming cable, which has an RJ45 connection on one end and this plugs into the radio's microphone port. This programming cable does require the latest version of the prolific drivers, but they're pretty much easy to find online. Okay, so let's go over some of the specifications. Now this radio is dual band, that covers two meters and 70 centimeters, specifically 136 megahertz to 174 megahertz, and then 400 to 470 megahertz. 6.25 kilohertz steps is also supported. So tuning to the UK PMR channels is possible, but remember this radio would be illegal to use on the UK PMR band. 199 memory channels can be stored and each channel can have an alpha tag, so great for storing repeaters. Now we'll go over the software programming options later in the video. Now the radio also has some other interesting features like PTT ID with voice announce, an FM radio if you want to listen to some tunes and dual reception. An impressive standby current of just 78 milliamps according to the specifications, means that the internal 12,000 milliamp hour battery will last a damn long time, definitely more than a handheld radio could possibly last for with their smaller capacity batteries. Now looking around the man pack and down one side is where we'll find a few switches and sockets. The two barrel sockets on the left are used for either powering the man pack purely from an external 13.8 volt DC supply, and the other barrel socket is for charging the internal battery. The power switch has three positions and in the center means no power is applied, but you can choose between DC input socket or the internal battery. The next switch along to the right is the audio output routing. In the center, the audio is off and the other two options are either in or out. Now these will determine if the audio output is from the man packs internal speaker, which is actually part of the radio, or whether the received audio comes out of the microphone. Now there's also a 3.5 millimeter socket here, which can be used with headphones. There's also a power button on the front panel of the radio, which you just push and hold in. The RJ45 socket over there on the left is used for either the microphone or the programming cable. And just above this, there's two status LEDs, which indicate receiving or transmitting. Now these are along with a channel up and down buttons, a menu access button, volume up and down, and three user programmable P buttons labeled as P1, P2, and P3. While there's lots of settings accessible from within the radio's menu, it's actually easier to configure the radio 
from the software. But at least you do have the option of changing some settings while out in the field if you don't have access to a computer. So if you're interested in hearing what the transmitted audio sounds like, I'm just going to use my SDR receiver to receive my transmission and record the audio. This is uh, M0 DQW testing audio from the VV898SP from like then the VV898SP man pack. Uh, this is what the audio sounds like. So Mike Zero Delta Quebec whiskey over. Now before we test the power output, Let's just quickly go over the included microphone. Now this microphone is actually a speaker mic and while it's difficult to demonstrate on video, the audio quality from the received audio, well, it's actually pretty clear and it's quite loud and it's definitely better than I've heard on some other speaker mics for sure. Now, the two switches down the right side can either lock the keypad to prevent accidental pressing or you can turn on and off the lights which illuminate the keypad. Now these are pretty bright and clear, even with the studio lights shining on them. Four buttons on the lower part of the mic control which VFO to use, either A or B, and you can also access the menu from these buttons. The main keypad allows direct frequency entry, or you can use those up and down arrow buttons. However, when in VFO mode, the frequency will change depending on the pre-programmed frequency step, or if you're in memory mode, these same buttons will move up and down the memory channels. Now on top of the mic, there's a further two buttons. Now these change the audio output level, i.e. the volume. Okay, so let's now test the RF output power. And according to my non-lab quality NiSci power meter, and with 13.8 volt DC applied from my shack power supply, we see an RF output of just over 20 watts on the two meter band at 145 megahertz. Now, if we jump up to 435 megahertz, i.e. the 70 centimeter band, we see an output power of just under 20 watts. So let's now disconnect the external power supply and perform the same test using the internal battery as it arrived. I've not recharged this battery yet, but they come pretty much charged. So with the battery power of 435 megahertz, we see an output power of just under 17 watts. And then on the two meter band at 145 megahertz, we see an output power of just under 18 watts. Now, earlier, I mentioned this radio can be programmed by software and you have two choices. Now the official software is available online, but it's only for Windows. However, programming the memory channels or changing the radio's features is super simple and easily performed using that official software. Now the other software package which supports this radio is called Chirp and Chirp is multi-platform. Now Chirp allows you to program the radio just like the official software does, but Chirp has this really cool feature where it can download a repeater list based on your location within a set range. Now once you have those downloaded within the application, you can just copy and paste them to the radio's memories. Now this saves a huge amount of time by almost instantly filling the memory channels with local repeaters as opposed to adding each one individually like you have to with the official software. Now something I should have mentioned earlier when showing the side of the man pack is this little indicator. Now when you have the supplied power supply connected to the charge port, you'll notice that this little indicator lights up red, showing the battery is charging. Now I'm assuming that this will go green when it's fully charged. Perhaps if you have this man pack yourself, let us know down in the comments if yours turns green once the charge is complete. And here is what the insides look like. We can really see just how small that main radio actually is. The included battery is almost the same size as the radio. Now the battery is that large blue pack there on the right side, if you're not sure. Now I didn't mention this before, but there's also a little fan mounted on the base of the man pack here. Now I've not got mine to activate yet, which makes me think that this is temperature controlled. Now at the start of the video, I showed you the included vehicle DC power cable, which has a white connector on it. Well, this is where it would plug into if you were to use this radio outside of the man pack. Now personally, I think it'd be better to get another vehicle power cable that has a barrel connector on it, so you can at least use it with the man pack. Alternatively, you could potentially cut off that white connector on the supplied DC power cable and connect your own DC barrel connector. 
Now here's a quick clip of the audio coming from the radio's internal speaker and then the speaker microphone. Yeah, OK, uh, Tony, G4, XDR, Paul, Paul, G0, CDX. Yeah, we haven't uh, been to the, where you are in the Peak Districts for a long, long time, so we... Anyway, have a good day, Tony, and uh, seven threes for an hour, and uh, nice to hear you, mate, and uh, enjoy your baseball tarts. Um, G4, XDR, G0, CDX. Well, there we go, guys. That's an overview of the VV898SP. Now, if you're wondering about spurious emissions, I didn't bother testing them because I had read online that this has already passed an FCC certification and has its own ID. Anyway, guys, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.